Just three days until April the 15th, and you know what that means. Maybe too late to cut your tax bill this year, but you are going to want to start getting ready for 2011. That's when the Bush tax cuts are set to expire, and Uncle Sam could end up taking a much bigger bite out of your pay. You might even want to consider moving to Wyoming. Yes, Wyoming. <laughs> our next guest, John Olivier, is a tax lawyer with White and Case, and he's with me here in our newsroom. So, I mean, are people actually packing up their bags and, and reconsidering what they call home, which states they call home? Yeah, indeed they are. And it's very simple, well, easier, the more wealth you have, you may already own a house in Wyoming. And so moving is not a matter of going out, hiring a realtor and finding a place. It's just spending more time in your place that's in a low tax jurisdiction. And, and the reason we're talking about states like Wyoming and some mm -hmm. of the other uh, states out there that might have less of an, an income tax mm -hmm. or no income tax is because of what we just said, that the expiration of the Bush tax cuts in 2011. Uh, tell me, where are you advantaged to go move to right now besides Wyoming? Well, Florida is another place that uh, clients often look at. Florida has no income tax and no estate tax. And when the estate tax comes back in 2011, Florida will look even more attractive. Mm -hmm. And when you, uh, I'm looking at the notes here, and you say it, those in the highest rate on income tax, you're going to go from about 35 percent almost to 40 percent, 40 percent of your pay going to the tax man. That's correct. With the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, the maximum rate will go to 30 from 35 to 39.6, and then in 2013, when the Medicare tax t kicks in, that's an additional 3.8 percent. So that will take the maximum rate to 43.8 percent. 43.8 percent on just on income. Uh, just on your federal, yes, your income tax. Wow. So in addition to, you know, your salary, your income there, you're also going to be experiencing changes to, uh, you know, how your portfolio is taxed, right? Absolutely. There are going to be capital gains changes here. That's correct. The capital gains tax rate will go from 15 to 20, and then with the Medicare tax, that's an additional 3.8, so it will be 23.8 percent on capital gains. So if you are one of these high-income earners, as so many of our viewers are, what, what do they do? I mean, what loopholes do still exist? Well, one of the things to do is look at how this 3.8 percent surtax applies. It applies to your investment income. Uh, investment income does not include, for example, municipal bonds. So you should reevaluate your portfolio. Munis may not have made sense before, may make sense now. Gains earned within a life insurance policy also are not subject to the tax. So a uh, cash value life insurance policy may not have made sense before, may make sense now. And what about an IRA? IRAs are interesting. Traditional IRAs will, distributions from them are not considered investment income, but they are considered income for purposes of seeing whether you make the threshold. And the threshold for these taxes is $200,000 for an individual and two fifty dollars for a married couple. And I'd like to point out there's a large, what we call marriage penalty, built into that. Uh, two single people could make 400000 before being subject to this, and a married couple only two fifty. Wow. And there's that uh, opportunity, perhaps, this year to, to transition to a Roth IRA, right, if you're at a higher income bracket. That's correct. And a Roth looks even more attractive because the Roth now, you can pay tax at today's lower rates. Your future distributions will not be subject to the higher taxes.